Welcome to Module 8, Indoor Air Quality. In this module, you will learn about indoor air issues that affect asthma, products found in the Safer Cleaning Kit, cleaning techniques, and how to create a safe sleep zone. Indoor air issues include smoke from tobacco or marijuana along with wood smoke from stoves. Chemicals and strong smells can also affect indoor air quality. Reducing dust and cleaning regularly will also be discussed in this module. Exposure to environmental tobacco smoke, or ETS, is common in the United States. ETS is associated with increased severity of asthma-related symptoms, decreased lung function, and greater use of health services among those who have asthma in all age groups. Exposure to tobacco smoke while pregnant has been shown to be a risk factor for the development of asthma in both infancy and later in childhood. Effects of ETS on a child's asthma are greater when the mother smokes, especially for children under 5 years old. The primary modes of exposure to ETS for adults who have asthma may be when they are at work or traveling. Smoking in doorways and smoking outside to avoid exposing others may not reduce exposure enough for children. Smoking harms not just the smoker, but also family members, co-workers, and others who breathe the smoker's cigarette smoke, called second-hand smoke. Exposure to secondhand smoke increases the severity and frequency of asthma episodes. Both adults and children living with smokers are more likely to develop pneumonia, colds, cough, flu, sore throats, and ear infections. When someone smokes inside the home, it takes only 15 minutes for the tobacco smoke to reach every room in the house. Particles of tobacco smoke stick to skin, hair, clothing, furniture, carpet, and drapes even after smoke seems to have cleared from the air. People are then exposed to the tobacco smoke even if they were not around when someone was smoking. Tobacco smoke contains nicotine as well as 4,000 other chemicals. Forty-three of the chemicals in tobacco smoke have been shown to cause cancer in humans. If you can smell smoke, there are tiny smoke particles in the air that you breathe into your lungs. It's important to minimize a child's exposure to smoke, especially if they have asthma. Here are some ways to do this. Quit smoking. Make your home a smoke-free zone. Wear a smoking jacket and hat. Wash your hands after smoking. And make sure your car is a smoke-free zone. People who have asthma may have health effects earlier and at lower smoke levels than healthy people. Children have more issues with smoke for several reasons. Their respiratory systems are still developing. They breathe more air and air pollution per pound of body weight than adults, and they're more likely to be active outdoors. Wood smoke contains harmful chemical substances. Particulate matter in the smoke gets inhaled and is one of the biggest human health threats. A properly installed, correctly used EPA-certified wood stove releases significantly less pollution into the environment. A fire that is burning properly produces little or no smoke from the chimney. More smoke means more air pollution. An EPA-certified wood stove will have both a temporary paper label attached to the front and a permanent metal label on the back or side of the wood stove. Some household chemicals can make asthma worse. These include lung irritants such as chlorine bleach and ammonia, solvent products like acetone and paint thinner, and products with strong fragrances or odors. It's best to eliminate these from the home. Other household chemicals can be hazardous to use or store in the home and can also make asthma worse. Higher priority products include pesticides with warning or danger on their labels, cleaning products with bleach or ammonia, 
and any products that trigger the patient's asthma. These should be removed from your home. Choosing less hazardous products can make your home safer. Products such as corrosive drain, oven, and toilet bowl cleaners and air fresheners or fragranced products can potentially trigger asthma. Consider removing or replacing these lower priority products. Choosing less hazardous products can help to make the home safer. Pesticides should be your last resort in solving home pest problems. Try to use non-chemical methods such as traps, barriers, or removal if possible. All chemical products should be kept out of reach of children and pets, either on higher shelves or in locked cabinets. Flammable products should be kept far away from the furnace, hot water heater, or other sources of heat or flame. Products containing chlorine bleach should not be mixed with other products. If hazardous products must be used, follow label directions regarding safety protection, such as goggles, gloves, and ventilation. If you use hazardous products at work, shower and change clothes, either prior to coming home or at the door, and wash work clothes separately. Dispose of hazardous products properly. The Safer Cleaning Kit helps you use safer cleaning products and practices at home. You can easily create your own Safer Cleaning Kit. The products include inexpensive items easily found at most stores. Specifically, the Safer Cleaning Kit includes a bucket, sponge, spray bottle, cleaning cloth, hypoallergenic dish soap, baking soda, and vinegar. It's important to understand how to read product labels. When looking for safer cleaning products, you should look for certifications from trusted sources like the Environmental Protection Agency, or EPA, and Cradle to Cradle. Safer cleaning recipes are also available to go along with the safer cleaning kit. These recipes can be easily prepared with the items in the kit. For example, baking soda and dish soap can be used in place of harsher bleach options for cleaning toilets. Cleaning your home often is an important way to help someone with asthma stay healthy. The goal of cleaning is to reduce or eliminate asthma triggers in your home. Cleaning can reduce dust mite allergens, control mold and mildew, and eliminate roach and rodent attractants such as food spills. All of these can trigger asthma. The most important rooms to clean are your bedroom, the kitchen, and any other rooms you use most. Get your bedroom clean first. Once the first big cleaning is done, it's easier to keep it clean with two quick cleaning sessions each week. After getting the bedroom clean, move on to rooms where the person with asthma spends most of his or her time. Clean each of these rooms once a week. Have a plan of attack. Clean one room at a time, from left to right and top to bottom. Assign specific cleaning duties to specific days of the week. Scheduling housework provides a routine to keep the job from becoming overwhelming. Try to share the work if you live with others old enough and healthy enough to help. Start with a clean slate. Get rid of everything you are not using, have never used, your family has outgrown, or that is broken or outdated. Eliminating a bunch of stuff to clean around makes it easier to keep things organized. Always vacuum or mop floors last. Dirt from whatever you are cleaning or dusting above will just settle onto the floor again. Keep dirt out of the house by using doormats and taking off shoes when inside. Check for mold under and on the back of the toilet tank, on walls, and in window tracks, and remove it with dishwashing soap and water solution. Think about how often the bedroom, kitchen, and other rooms used are being vacuumed, mopped, and dusted. Look at these rooms and see if there is visible dust, dirt, food debris, or clutter. Look over the bathroom and kitchen to see if mold is present. It's important to create a safe sleeping zone for the person with asthma. 
Encase mattress and pillows in dust impermeable covers. Hot wash bedding weekly. Damp wipe the mattress and pillow cover weekly to remove the invisible dust mites and their droppings. Keep furry pets out of the bedroom if the patient is known or suspected to be sensitized. Put a no smoking sign on the bedroom door if necessary. When cleaning the bedroom, the top priorities are vacuuming or cleaning floors, vacuuming cloth covered furniture, and dusting. If carpet is present, remove it, but check with your landlord first if you rent your home. If this is not possible, vacuum two times per week. If hard surfaced floors are present, dust or mop weekly. If area rugs are present, vacuum twice a week. Once every six months, take outside or to a place with a clean and hard surface. Vacuum on back, set the rug aside and vacuum up the dust, lay the rug down again, and then vacuum the front. Repeat this. Clean the back and front one more time each. If upholstered furniture is present, remove it. If this is not possible, vacuum twice a week, including removing cushions and vacuuming in cracks and crevices. Find places where things should go, and then pick up toys, clothes, and books, and place them in a designated place. Dust and wash surfaces such as window sills, baseboards, dressers, and tables using a damp cloth with warm, soapy water once a week, or a cloth with micro pockets which traps dust. If any mold or mildew is present, use dishwasher soap and water to remove it. If you are sensitive to mites or pets, remove drapes if possible. If this is not possible, vacuum once per week using a vacuum cleaner with an attachment or wipe them down. Wipe down the outside of air vents and registers. All homes can have dust. Dust can contain allergens such as dust mites, animal dander, and mold which make asthma worse. Dust can also carry other substances that may harm a child's health, such as lead, pesticide residue, and other toxic chemicals. Dust can make asthma worse when it is breathed into the lungs. Controlling dust can be a very important way to help control asthma. Control dust by two strategies. Don't let it get into the house. Control track-in. Get rid of the dust in the house by effective, regular cleaning. To control bringing in dust, take your shoes off as soon as you enter the door. Store the shoes near the doorway on a rack or on the floor. Use a commercial quality doormat. The best mat is 2 feet by 3 feet, is made of dense level loop woven nylon pile, and has non-slip rubber backing. A piece of level loop or plush carpet is an option. Cocoa mats don't work well. Place the mat inside the doorway or outside where it will not get wet. Wipe your feet twice on the mat when entering. Make sure everyone, including children, uses the mat. Vacuum the front and clean or vacuum the backside of the mat once a month. This is best done outside. To get rid of dust in the house, dust the person with asthma's bedroom and play area if they are a child two times a week and one time a week in other rooms. Dust things in the room that are higher up from the floor before dusting things that are at a lower level. First, do wet dusting with a microfiber towel, vacuum with a HEPA filter vacuum, then follow up with dusting again. Using correct vacuuming technique, vacuum floors and cloth-covered furniture two times a week in the person with asthma's bedroom and one time a week on other floors and furniture. You probably already know how to vacuum. However, when someone in the house has asthma, vacuuming regularly and using a vacuum properly is even more important. A vacuum with a HEPA filter is very important for people with asthma. Turn the vacuum on and off by using the switch, not by pulling the cord from the wall outlet. The vacuum is meant only for picking up dust. Pick up toys, debris, and large pieces of trash before vacuuming. Don't use the vacuum to pick up large pieces of debris. 
Check the vacuum bag before each use and replace the bag when the indicator is red or the bag is filled to the dotted line on the bag. To thoroughly vacuum a room, start by vacuuming a 3x3 foot square in forward and back motion. Go back and forth once over one strip starting at the bottom of the square. Then move the vacuum over to the right and go back and forth over the next strip until the whole area is covered. Start over again on the left and repeat the whole pattern. When the entire area is clean, move the vacuum to the side of the same square and repeat the pattern at 90 degrees from the first pattern. Move to the next square area and repeat. A HEPA air filter can help remove allergens from the air as well as particulate matter like smoke or diesel exhaust if you live near a busy road or highway. Cleaning any mold is another important way to help a person with asthma. You can use simple products from the Safer Cleaning Kit to remove mold without toxic smells. Key points from this module are Exposure to secondhand tobacco or marijuana smoke increases the severity and frequency of asthma episodes. Wood smoke contains harmful chemical substances. Particulate matter in smoke that gets inhaled is one of the biggest human health threats. Some household chemicals can make asthma worse. It's best to remove these from the home and choose safer options. Cleaning the house frequently is an important way to help a person with asthma stay healthy 